And I don't kiss up. I think everybody knows that by now. I don't, I don't kiss up because I'm trying to keep a job. I came here knowing that if I'm trying to keep a job, I'm not going to be here long anyhow. So just come here and do the work. But I do want to make sure that I acknowledge our board and Nate Hogan, we'll bring him up in a few minutes and I'll, you'll hear remarks from him, our board president, Manny Abarca, who's here uh, as our vice chair, Jennifer Wolfsey, our treasurer, I mean vice chair Jennifer Wolfsey, treasurer Manny Abarca. We have Candace Buckner, we have Tanisha Ford, we have Rita Cortez, and we have Dr. Marvia Jones. Those are our current board of directors. Thank you all for your support. I also have to acknowledge former board members who are in here. I see our former board chair, Patty Manser, one of the people responsible for hiring me. I see I see Matt Oates, another one of the original board members that hired me. I know John Fierro is somewhere in here because he told me he was coming, but I don't see him. I see Asia Morris in here. Am I missing John House, the board chair who hired me, and then also Dr. Amy Harshfield, one of the original board members that hired me. So I want to thank you all. Thank you all for believing in me. I remember Dr. Harshfield told me one day, she's, you know, because she's very direct. She said, I I'm going to tell you, I didn't like, I didn't like your video when you really did your video, but when you came and you interviewed, you, you, made, me, you made me say, hey, I, I think this guy can help us move this district forward. Remember that conversation? And she was direct about it, but she's always been direct around the work that needs to be done for the children in this school district, and that is the same with all of these board members. They, accountability matters, growth matters, and we just know that we could not do this without all of your tireless time and dedication to this board. We also have building administrators. I, I'm going to come back to my cabinet in a few minutes. We have our principals because, listen everybody, I was a high school principal. If you do not have principals that have bought into the vision, it is almost impossible to get anything done. You can't execute a strategic plan. And we have a lot of them in here. So all of our principals, if you would stand at this time and be acknowledged, because it's your work that has contributed to this day. I also want to acknowledge our teachers. And many of the teachers who are, have been invited today serve on our Teachers Advisory Council. So I meet with them multiple times throughout the school year. We talk about district issues. These people are the individuals that kind of help guide me as a superintendent, help me to understand what's happening in the trenches, and also just give me some honest feedback on how they feel that they're being supported from the senior level uh, in, in central office. So all of our teachers who are here, whether you're on the advisory council or not, please stand up. You're in those classrooms every day working with these students and working with these parents. Thank you all, and especially those of you who have persevered through some of the very dark days. Brighter days are ahead. Trust me on that, and it's because of you all. And then I also wanted to acknowledge our central office employees. Many of them are in here, whether they're executive level individuals, whether they work in various departments. These are the people who are charged with ensuring that there is a connection directly to central office and to our schools. So all of our central office employees, would you stand and be acknowledged at this time? Thank you. Thank you all. And then we have our cabinet. And anybody who's an executive know that if you don't have good people, that are direct reports to you, ensuring that the strategic plan is being adhered to, once again, your tenure is short. 
And so I want to, at this time, just acknowledge a number of our cabinet members. You will hear from the Deputy Superintendent, Jennifer Collier, in a few minutes. Um, I see Dr. Letitia Woodley. I'm just going around and, and making sure I'm acknowledging them. We have David Anson, who is our uh, interim, the interim over IT. We have Linda Quinley. Where's Linda Quinley? I just want to make sure we're acknowledging you. Linda Quinley, who is our Chief Operation Finance Officer. We have Bill. I saw you in the back somewhere. There he goes. Bill is our Chief Legal Counsel. We stole him from Desi, so we're very happy that he's on board. David Rand, where are you? David Rand is our Chief Research and Accountability Officer in the back. So, David, thank you for all of the work that you do. Also, I want to make sure that Kelly Waitu, she drove us for several hours today back and forth to Jefferson City. Thank you, Kelly Waitu, for putting all of this together and working with media. She's our Chief Communication Officer. And then we have Marla Shepard. Marla Shepard came here with me uh, a year after I started. Marla Shepard was our Deputy Superintendent. She's back in Houston now, but she is here today to celebrate. Marla, welcome back. Thank you. I saw Trinity Davis, who is working to help us with teachers like me, bring in teachers of color into the school district. Thank you for your work uh, leading our curriculum department. And I saw Darren Slade in the back. Darren Slade is now Deputy Superintendent out in the Hazelwood School District, and he's, help and he's competitive. He said he's coming after our games. Come on, game on, man. We're ready for that. We're ready for that. And then we had invited Jordan Gordon. Where's Jordan Gordon? I did not see Jordan Gordon. Where is he? He's out? I didn't see him. So Jordan Gordon is our Chief Human Resource Officer, a KCPS grad, moved up through our system, is, is helping to lead us, and he's not here today. And then... I have to say to all of our business partners, thank you. And many of you I have already called and spoken with you individually. Thank you. Without your funding, without your support, none of this is possible. The reason why I signed my second contract to come back was because the business sector, who people had said had turned their back on us at one point, came back to help support this school district. Philanthropy, and there's so many of you in here that didn't give up on us. Thank you. We look forward to continuing to work and partner with you. Thank you all. <laughs> to our parents, to our students, we look forward to continuing to partner with you. And there's a number of parents who are in this audience. To friends of the school district, this is only the beginning. What I want to leave as I step away from this podium, leave you with, is I want everybody to understand that KCPS will not lower their guards. KCPS expects that we will continue to pursue nothing but excellence in the work that we do to grow our students. We want to grow them. We want to see proficient and advanced rates increase. We want to see more opportunities. Blueprint 2030 will allow for the, us to do that. We ask that everybody lean in on that conversation. Our mayor, I see you over here, don't think I didn't forget about you, but we know that we need you all to help support us in this work. City council members who are here, elected officials, those of you who for whatever reason just don't have positive things to say about this district, we're not going to take shots at you. What I'm asking you to do is to just come back and partner with us. A strong, vibrant, robust school district in the urban sector sector bodes well for this whole city. And we don't have time to fight against each other. So what I ask of everybody is when you hear from Jennifer Collier in a few minutes, she's going to give you a little bit of a look into what our future is going to look like academically. We can't stay accredited on the path that we're on right now. We're antiquated, we're outdated, we're too rigid. And if COVID didn't teach us anything, here's what it did teach us, that we're not agile enough to really truly prepare these kids for the future that they deserve. 
that means we have to dismantle this system. We have to redesign it. And we're going to have to have some grace from this community to do it. We're going to go through some pain. We put out a call to the state board that there are some legislative barriers that are in the way. And we're going to need support with that, getting those things out the way so we can envision a much better future for this school district. As I close out, and I know I said this before, social justice issues will be at the forefront of everything that we do. We will continue to fight against gender inequities, social economic status inequities, racial inequities. That's been our position from day one because we serve a very diverse school district. And we have a responsibility to ensure that all of them can get an education in a barrier-free environment. I want to thank everybody who's here, my superintendent peers who are here, the cooperating school district group, and all of the charter leaders who are here that have come together in the best interest of children. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I cannot express to you, I cannot express to you how I feel right now. Because it's not about me. It, it never was about me. It's about this city. Now let's get out here. We celebrate now. We roll our sleeves up. And we got to get back to work. Because we owe that to our kids. Thank you, everybody. And at this time, I want to bring up Nate Hogan, who is someone that's very competitive as I am. I'm not going to say anything bad about you. I'll just have you come out. Nate Hogan, our board chair, will offer remarks. All right, I'm going to, so good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wow. <laughs> Can you come back up? <laughs> um, let me start by saying, wow, what a day. What, what a day. Um, what a day. Um, I do want to start by saying it is, now is absolutely the right time to rejoice. No matter what you hear, now is the time to rejoice. And Dr. Bedell, I'm going to get you in trouble real quick. Um, so I, the first thing I want to do is I want to say thank you to my incredible um, partner in life and my wife. Um, that woman has supported me in all of the crazy things I've ever done in my life. I mean, it's amazing. Come, you know, coming home and say, hey, I'm going to run for school board. What? Like, most of them would be like, really? And she's just been there time and time again. And Felicia Hogan, I love you with all my heart. Thank you for being a constant, consistent supporter of me. Um, so I, I absolutely echo Dr. Bedell's comments. I'm not going to go off script, really, a whole lot like Bedell likes to do. Um, I'll, be, I'll just be very, very clear. Um, I echo your comments, particularly um, as it relates to your team, which includes an incredible group of teachers, students, administrators, building leaders, nutritional and technical communication, security and custodial teams, among others. But I also want to take an opportunity to thank a man who I've not only grown to appreciate, but genuinely. Now, that doesn't mean I won't hold you accountable. Um, oddly, in Kansas City, like, you have to reiterate that or people think you're a rubber stamp, right? Like, we can't have a good relationship where we challenge and respect each other because, you know, certainly I must just be giving it all to them without challenging. I think we fundamentally believe that um, together um, as men working in this very, very difficult um, world of urban public ed. Dr. Bedell, you're more than just a passionate and gifted speaker um, who creates an emotional response in audiences. To suggest so is a disservice to your leadership um, and your talents. Over the last two years, I've watched you experience the pressure cooker of stress brought on by a global pandemic that has disrupted every industry in every country. And you've done so without losing sight for who we're fighting for. Many leaders would have, and indeed have, given up. You use your personal narrative, which is so aligned with mine, to focus on what's important and to filter through the noise, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Your commitment to this district is unmatched by your predecessors, and that's evident by your tenure in one of the most difficult and unfairly competitive districts in this country, but more importantly by the results you and your team have delivered. Those results, regardless of the metric, uh, metric have moved meaningfully in the right direction. This is a testament to your knowledge, skill, and your passion for doing the right things 
for the right reasons. I know I speak for our full board when I say thank you for your service to our kids, our families, this entire region over the last six years, and cheers to another six. He's committed. It's a done deal. Um, <laughs> to our board. We had some tricky moments right out of the gate. We really did. But we refocused, putting our differences behind us, not ignoring them, right, but putting them in their proper places. And we centered ourselves on what's best for our students. I'm immensely proud of each of you. And I'm hum uh, I'm honored and humbled to be a part of this team. To prior board members, particularly the board chairs, Patty Manser, Councilwoman Melissa Robinson, and John Heil. Only the four of us know what it's like to sit in that seat. The time commitment and the pressure from this community is as intense as it gets. Yet all board members take it in stride knowing that every student who walks across that stage during commencement is worth every minute of the hard work. Thank you for stepping up and laying a solid foundation and taking on a role that often feels thankless, especially on payday. <laughs> for those who aren't aware, we get paid nothing. Um, of course, you're all aware um, that our thank yous come in the form of a much more important reward, and it's watching the future of our city succeed. Now I want to acknowledge the elephant in the room for many of us. For far too long, this community has underestimated and undervalued our kids. We take, the, we take the shots, right, as adults. But when those shots come at us, they ultimately impact downstream our kids. So we're underestimating and undervaluing our kids. Let that sort of sink in a bit. Their ability to overcome an incredible amount of adversity nearly every day of their young lives and still come through our doors and perform is a testament to their intelligence, their agility, and their raw desire to succeed. Thank you to each of our students and their families for never giving up, even under the harshest conditions, a lot of which adults in this community and in Jefferson City create. For everyone listening to my voice, please let this accomplishment make something very clear. We're building a district for our kids. We will not give up this fight. We will make decisions based on the facts, serving this district with distinction, always centering ourselves on what's in the best interest of our scholars. And as I said in Jefferson City this morning, we will celebrate this incredible and long-fought accomplishment. And afterwards, our board is committed to creating, in collaboration, in collaboration with Dr. Bedell and his team, a district that is more nimble, even more effective than we are today, and that is equitable, challenging, and dare I say, fun. In closing, I have a call to action for everyone here and listening online. Getting full accreditation is an incredible accomplishment but it's just the beginning of what can become a new era of educational excellence for this city. It will take all of us to move beyond rhetoric and towards action. Every industry, potential and existing philanthropic partner, retired volunteer, mentor, parent, and student will need to engage with this district more and differently going forward. As Dr. Bedell frequently says, we can't do this alone. For us to raise the bar and achieve even greater things, we need you to partner with us. You'll have your first opportunity to do just that on January 26th, when Dr. Collier outlines her academic vision for the district, and we hear from Dr. Bedell's team about how we will engage with the community in ways that captures all of your voices. So I hope to see everyone there or online, because together, we can take this district to the next level. Thank you, and congratulations to the KCPS team. I will bring up the very awesome Dr. Jennifer Collier. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to try to do this without my glasses. So today I stand before you humbled, grateful, and filled with immeasurable joy due to our recent attainment of full accreditation. As a 22-year educator with Kansas City Public Schools, having served in numerous roles just about at every level, 
and having lived and frustration associated with the labels unaccredited or provisionally accredited. This moment is surreal. We can't celebrate this accomplishment today without first recognizing the transformational leadership of our superintendent, Dr. Mark Bedell. Also, we must recognize our current and past KC board members, our amazing teachers and principals who do the work in the classrooms and the schools every day, our remaining staff members, our students, our families in the community. Today's celebration is a testament to the power of focused leadership, collective will, persistent effort, and an unwavering belief that this achievement was even possible. While we pause today to celebrate and bask in this long-awaited moment, it is imperative that we remember that our struggle is not over. The attainment of full accreditation is a major milestone on our journey towards excellence in education, and it serves to propel us forward to even greater achievement. So after this well-deserved time of jubilation and celebration, we must then quickly shift our gaze toward the future. While we have made great gains as a school system, we know that there is yet more work to do. We must laser focus in on improving proficiency rates for all student subgroups in the areas of reading, math, science, and social studies. And even then, our work will not be done. Today does not mark the end. Instead, it is the beginning of the next leg of the journey towards a holistic educational experience characterized by authentic connection, empowerment of all stakeholders, and liberation from the systems of inequity, oppression, and other barriers that operate as impediments to the growth and the development of our children. As an urban school system serving students who predominantly represent historically marginalized communities and groups, we must center them as we rethink and reimagine an educational experience that enables them to boldly pursue their passions, their interests, and to become the best versions of themselves. As author Bettina Love so poignantly expressed, to love all children, we must struggle together to create the schools that we are taught to believe are impossible. Schools that are built on justice, love, joy, and anti-racism. Our schools must truly become the havens of intellectual, mental, social, and emotional safety that will nurture and cultivate the raw genius, the creativity, and the untapped talents that reside within our students. We can and we will achieve all of this through thoughtful implementation. And I'm just gonna share just a few of the instructional and partnership strategies that we will engage to accomplish this. This is not everything. But one, we will first immerse ourselves in culturally responsive teaching, where the deep culture of our students is honored and understood by educators, and then it's leveraged to advance learning, meaning making, and the acquisition of new knowledge. Through critical pedagogy, our students will learn to exercise voice and agency as they advocate for themselves and others, operating as agents of change and champions of equity and justice. Through project-based learning, our students at all levels will work cooperatively with others to problem solve, to research, investigate, and to find solutions to complex questions and real world issues. We will have STEAM for our elementary schools where our students will be introduced to critical elements of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Through an interdisciplinary learning approach, students will experience the connectedness of these disciplines in ways that mirror real life and deepen the relevancy of the learning experience. Our students will be introduced to foreign language in kindergarten, instrumental music by the third grade, and they will engage in hands-on experiential learning in dedicated science labs. In our secondary schools, the arbitrary constraints of space and time will be removed. And students are going to be able to learn under a competency-based model where learning happens at their own pace through various modalities and with flexible hours that suits their needs. Additionally, our students will have expanded opportunities to explore career pathways, internships, and job shadowing opportunities that will prepare them for college, career, 
and life. Our pre-K programming will be expanded so that we can serve more students as we prepare them for the rigors and the challenge of elementary school. Our teachers and school staff will be afforded the time and the space to collaborate so that they can prepare for instruction and respond to student data. We, we're, we're going to make sure that our teachers feel valued as they are extended opportunities to inform key school district decisions, as well as receive compensation that reflects their contributions of time, effort, and quality of work. Our parents and our caregivers they're going to be key partners. We're going to rethink their role in this educational process. They will be empowered to play a more integral role. And they will be a part of the decision-making apparatus of the district and our schools. We must remember that our parents and caregivers are our students' first teachers. Community partnerships will be reinforced and new relationships will be forged as partnerships continue to be vital to our success. As Dr. Bedell has said many times over, schools cannot do this transformational work alone. These are just a few of the steps that we're going to take to bring this vision to fruition. Forward focused and in relentless pursuit of this vision, we will continue to press until we see all of this and more become a reality. KCPS, I believe that we will successfully navigate this next phase of this journey. Belief is the critical first step of the journey. So my question to you today is, do you believe? So for those of us who believe, we're going to breathe life into this vision. As we roll up our sleeves, we put some feet to our faith, we put some work behind our words, we put some actions to support our aspirations. Get ready, Team KCPS. Our best days are yet to come. Thank you. Introducing a long-term employee here at KCPS, Dr. Daryl Davis, our Assistant Superintendent of Equity, Inclusion, and Diversity. Thank you, Dr. Collier, and I do believe. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Daryl Davis. As mentioned, I serve as the Assistant Superintendent of Equity, Inclusion, and Innovation. I've spent my entire adult life as an educator in Kansas City Public Schools, 26 years thus far. I followed in the footsteps of my father, who served as a teacher for nearly three decades in the school system prior to retirement. I was hired fresh out of college during what is now referred to as the DSEG era. I was hired as a black history and multicultural studies teacher at the Northeast Global Studies Middle Magnet School. <laughs> if you remember that, you've been around a while. <laughs> After teaching, I went on to serve 12 years as an elementary, middle, and high school principal, and now 10 years at the uh, district office. During my tenure, I've seen thousands of children, and I've watched them grow. Several of them, three of them, my own daughters who attended school in this district. I've worked for 14 superintendents through five strategic plans and numerous instructional frameworks. I've seen schools close through consolidation efforts, and I've watched some of them reopen again. I've seen accomplishment and frustration, tragedy and triumph. But today, to once again be a fully accredited school system, today is the biggest triumph of them all. Today is a cause for celebration. Today is for all the parents and caregivers who entrust us with their children every day. Today is for all the students who show up daily to receive the promise of a quality education. Today is for all the teachers, counselors, administrators who wake up every morning to fight for children. Today is for all the custodians, bus drivers, secretaries, 
security officers, and cafeteria staff who create a supportive ecosystem within our schools and around our schools each and every day. Today is for the staff at the Board of Education who work behind the scenes in curriculum, human resources, finance, and other departments. Today is for our Board of Directors who face demanding and complex challenges on behalf of our students and families. And today is for all of our mentors and volunteers who provide support to our students week in and week out. And, week out. and today is for our superintendent, Dr. Mark Bedell, who is the longest serving superintendent in Kansas City Public Schools since James Hazlitt, making Dr. Bedell the longest serving superintendent in more than 50 years. And today is a win for the entire city of Kansas City, Missouri, and I echo Dr. Collier, stay tuned, the best is yet to come. I will now call to the podium another long-serving staff member, Dr. Jesse Kirksey, principal at Harmon Elementary. Well, thank you very much, but I'd like to say <clears throat> that I started this district in 1966. <laughs> Now, I don't know why they didn't tell me today that everyone had a script. <laughs> so when I got here today, and Dr. Johnson said, oh, Dr. Kirksey, we have scripts. I said, you do? I said, no one told me. <clears throat> so I said to her, I said, you know what? <clears throat> I really don't have to say a word. I'll just sit there. <laughs> because you know, when you, are, you have so many years in the district, uh, sometimes when they talk to you, they think you can't hear. <laughs> Dr. Kirksey, this is Budget. How are you today? And I have to say, I'm just fine, and I can hear. I can hear, and I'm very happy to be here to say that I'm very proud of this day because I was here when we had that infamous court order, and I was one of the directors. So when I met my friend here, we talked about that infamous court order, and I concluded by saying to him, you know, Dr. Bedell, we did the best we could for such a time as that. And today, I'm happy to say that I am thrilled I'm proud of Dr. Bedell because, you see, Dr. Bedell included all of us. He came to this town not like he knew it all, but he had a vision, and he wanted us to help him capture that vision, so he included all of us. I tell you, he made me think that I was the best principal in the nation, and of course, I acted that way. He told my children that they were the best boys and girls in the nation, and they believed him, and they acted that way. <laughs> Dr. Riddell, we're so glad that you did come to Kansas City, and that you decided to stay, and just think what would have happened if you hadn't. He came here with a vision, he wanted to be very inclusive, and he included us all. And you know, when he would go to the state, when he would go to the city, and he would come back, he would say, well, you know, people, we got to find but a better way. So we have been constantly trying to find but a better way. Dr. Bedell, thank you for being the man that you are. You saw no helps. You came here, you invested, and you felt that our children, our children needed this opportunity. Thank you for being the man. Hello and welcome. 
I'm Peggy Everest, a fourth grade teacher here at J.A. Rogers. Change and resiliency, those are two words that can describe my 35-year teaching career with Kansas City Public Schools. Coming to Kansas City from Iowa was my first change. I started my teaching career in a small trailer on the playground of George Melcher Elementary School back in 1987. Six weeks later, I was transferred for overcrowding and racial balance. Change number two. I landed at E.C. Missouri at the corner of 45th and Jackson Street. Missouri was a visual and performing arts magnet school. Every day, we danced, sang, created art, built sets, ran the sound and light booth, and performed music all while learning. Even though the magnet money went away and superintendents and programs changed, one thing stayed the same. The resiliency and dedication of our educators and the commitment to our students and families to help KCPS stay the course. One of the constants in Kansas City Public Schools are the teachers who, regardless of the challenges, the society or learners commit every day, every year, to partner with the students and parents to ensure that every student grows, both academically and emotionally. Whether the program was Behavior Intervention Support Teams, BIST, Conscious Discipline, Positive Behavior, Interventions and Support, PBIS, or Restorative Justice, we have shown the importance of learning, believing in our students, and treating them with respect. The resiliency of our staff and students and families, our administration, the support of our teachers' union, and our school boards through these challenging years have made a difference. Now the city of Kansas City and the state of Missouri know what we, the KC Public Schools, Kansas City Public Schools community have always known. KCPS is a commit district committed educators and leaders nurturing amazing students that are making a difference as future leaders themselves. As Dr. Bedell has told us, roll up your sleeves and lean in. The amazing work continues. Thank you. you to Miss Heaven Davis, one of our sixth graders here at J.A. Rogers. Welcome to J.A. Rogers. We're glad to have you at our school. My name is Evan Davis and I'm a sixth grader here. I have been asked to say a few words about what J.A. Rogers and KCPS means to our community. I understand we have just earned full accreditation and that's really important. And what I want to leave you with a few thoughts about what it means for us kids. For me, it means we will have more parents bringing kids to our school for better learning opportunities. I think that other kids should be able to learn at J.A. Rogers because not only will they go through a good learning phase, but they will be comfortable and safe while doing it to be able to achieve their goals. This will not be possible without the amazing teachers and staff here. I want to thank everyone who worked hard for this great victory. Lastly, shout out to my sixth grade teacher, Ms. Zubia. Thank 
you, Heaven. And as we get ready to close out, Mr. Hogan said he's going to get me in trouble, but nope, I'm ahead of you, brother. <laughs> now, last night, I have two ladies that I have to recognize in here because without the support of these two individuals, man, I, I'm, I'm in trouble. So the first is Sandra Fetty. Anybody who has had to get on my agenda, anybody who has, you know, had to be able to get access to me, Sandra Fetty has been that person. In fact, even my wife, before she will go through me, she goes through Sandra Fetty because she knows that Sandra Fetty will give her the information. She will say to me, hey, I didn't know that you were going to be on news tonight. I guess I need to go to Sandra Fetty. But at the end of the day, I'm so thankful for you, Sandra, um, as my executive admin assistant, keeping this crazy schedule together and, and ensuring everybody that we follow through, that we exude a high level of professionalism. So I have to acknowledge you and thank you for having my back constantly. Thank you. Now, for my wife, when I told her that I wanted to acknowledge her, she said, no, you don't have to do that. I said, okay, what superintendent doesn't acknowledge his wife, especially given the fact that my wife gave up a lot. And she doesn't ever want this to be about me, and she doesn't want it to be about her. But it has to be about you at this moment. And I would ask that you just stand real quick, please. Just stand. Everybody, this lady gave up her private law practice so I can chase my dreams. She made sacrifices over and over and over so that I can have the impact that I'm able to have on children. From the days of being a teacher to a principal to supervising high schools. She followed me to Baltimore. She followed me to Kansas City. When we got here, she told me, I finally found something that I feel that I can have an impact in and working in CASA and doing the work that she does to represent underrepresented children. She cares about these kids just as much as we do in this room as educators and supporters of public ed. And listen, she has to take on all of the secondary trauma and stress that I bring home. Not just to her, but to my three children. And I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for sacrificing, for keeping me grounded, for holding me accountable. Like, y'all don't understand, she's just like a regular parent. When those buses didn't pick kids up that first year, and I remember we were probably about four days into the school year, and I remember her saying, fix it. Right? fix it. I said, and I made an excuse like, hey, I, this is what I inherited. I don't care. You are the superintendent. <laughs> Gave me a kiss on my cheek and said, now have a wonderful day. <laughs> so with that, sweetheart, thank you. We know we have a lot of work to do. We will continue to do this work to help advance this city, and I just appreciate you continuously having my back, and I do want you to know I love you dearly, just as I did when I met you in 1996. Oh. All right. So, Ms. Waitu, I think we are now ready for the press conference, and uh, as we do answer some of these questions, um, we will be very honest and transparent, as we have always been. Um, and we will not shy away from any tough questions because that's what accountability is about. We want to be able to make sure that this community has a clear understanding of where we are and where we're trying to go. And so at this time, I'll pass it over to Ms. Kelly Waitu, who will take us through this portion of the press conference. Good afternoon. Thank you for sticking with us, Dr. Bell. Thank you very much. We'll open up for questions this afternoon, and we have about 20 minutes to get the questions in because dismissal happens here at J.A. Rogers around 4, 4.15, and the kids are our priority to get them out safely with the bus traffic. So with that, any questions that we have, Dr. Bedell will take those now. Dr. Bedell, how long do you think we'll be here? 
So that's uh, an interesting question. Um, can we make sure that they get the microphone so people can hear those questions? Uh, the question was, how long do I think I will be here? Um, well, when I started five and a half years ago, I was told that I wouldn't make it past two. And um, it's now six. And our goal is we have a lot of work to do. I don't know if I shared this with you, but we talk a lot about facilities. We have to execute Blueprint 2030. But we also know that our kids deserve to be in modernized facilities. We know that the consistency here in order to ensure that we're able to really have this conversation around a capital projects bond is critical. And so at the end of the day, we know that's a couple of years, but perhaps depending on the appetite of this community, we want to see this work all the way through. And so I can't make any guarantees on that. My goal is that I want to see this work through and I'm committed to seeing that work through if that answers your question. Maria. Um, hi, Dr. Bello. Are students and families going to see an impact on their day-to-day -day experience of the district now that it's fully accredited? And if so, what will that impact be? Now, I don't know that it changes much around the day-to-day -day impact. I think that's the work that we're doing with Blueprint 2030 to really redesign and change what teaching and learning looks like, what the calendar looks like, what the school day looks like. I believe accreditation now gives us a little bit more leverage to be able to execute these things. And I also think that it gives us a level of trust with this community that we do have the ability to move the district forward. And so it, it, that would probably be the best answer I can give you on that. Marie Williams over here. Marie. Um, today, when you were talking to the state, you talked about a need for more flexibility for the district. And one of the things you mentioned to the state was the flexibility to extend the high school um, day uh, uh, to as late as 8 p.m. I wonder where something like that falls on your list, your to-do list, and are we likely to see that actually take place in Kansas City? Yeah, it's extremely important. Here's the reason being, when we went through the pandemic last year. Anytime anywhere learning became the mode for many school districts across the country. One of the things that we learned that was a positive out of it was that we had kids that were working during the school day, was able to work out a flexible schedule model with their teachers and were able to responsibly complete their schoolwork while being able to help make ends meet at home. So when I talk about this 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. type schedule at the high school level, I'm talking about by the time these students become juniors. We should be offering a flexible schedule where students are able to work 8 to 12 or come into school 8 to 12. Maybe they're coming in a window 12 to 4. Maybe they're coming in a window 4 to 8. We also know that because we are a 100% free and reduced lunch uh, school district that many of our kids don't have access to internships and those types of opportunities if at the end of the school day they have to get home to help with siblings or they have to go home and they have to work. So if we're able to build that into their schedule by the time they're in 11th grade where they have a hybrid schedule, where some of their courses are online and some are in person, we think that that will allow for us to better serve our community based on our community needs. The problem that we have is that we have legislative uh, barriers that basically designate what c constitutes seat time and how you get funded for seat time. And in particular, now we have these barriers that say that we can't even start school until the fourth Monday of August. And it really puts us in this continuous model where we cannot innovate the way that we need to innovate because we don't have the flexibility from a more of a local control to try to work with our community around what we think is best for us. So I am asking that they work hard, the State Board, the Department of Elementary Secondary Education, work hard to help remove some of these barriers so we can be more flexible like our secondary counterparts. I see Dr. Beatty in the back and Dr. Lee. Like those individuals, we want that same type of flexibility. Dr. Bedell McKenzie, KSHB. Hi, Dr. Bedell. I just wanted to ask if you could just share a little bit about how exciting and important this is for students who would like to apply for scholarships or head on to college, uh, you know, coming from a fully accredited school district. 
Well, I would tell you, I think it's extremely important for the kids um, because they can now also say we're graduating from a fully accredited school district. We also know that there are former people who graduated out of this school district when it wasn't accredited. And one of the individuals shared a copy of his diploma with me, Matthew Oates. I think he graduated from Paseo in 2007, 2003. And he sent a picture of his high school diploma. And apparently, which I wouldn't know what that this belongs on it because we haven't been accredited, there is a gold, there is a seal of the state of Missouri if you are fully accredited that goes on your high school diploma. These students now graduating will have that on their high school diplomas. And, it, and for people who graduated from this school district, this is a sense of pride for them um, because their love for their school district didn't waver even though they attended this school district during some difficult times to see that your school district has now emerged and is and we will we will be a problem i'm telling everybody this we will be competitive this will give us leverage um, we will get out here and we will let people know we are fully accredited and a lot of it is because of all of the hard work of uh individuals like mr oates who graduated from this school district but came back to serve because he didn't want kids to graduate out of this high school and not have that seal so it, it's 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 definitely a pride piece carolina kctv5 <laughs> So I've got two questions. One of them is, what does this mean for the city? And the other one is, what does it mean to be fully accredited? We were talking to somebody on our way in, and they're like, what, do, what does that mean exactly? So you kind of talked to, about it a little bit just now about, you know, kids can say that they came from a fully accredited high school, but what does that mean exactly for them in the long term and for the district in the long term? I think through the formula that the state has put in place, and when you look at all of the different data points that they look at, it means that you have met the minimum state, the minimum standard of what the state of Missouri requires as of a school district to be fully accredited. Doesn't mean that we have arrived. And that's the thing I try to tell people, we will not lower our guards because we have a lot of work to do until we are at or above state average across the board and then doing that at a national level, we have a ton of work to do. But it does allow for people to say that our school district has met the minimum requirements when they look at the total formula and they calculate all of those different variables. And so it is, it is a sense of pride. I've worked in a school when I was an elementary teacher, and it was unaccredited after our first year. And it was just this stigma. It was this gorilla that was on your back. And nobody likes that feeling of being unacceptable, unaccredited. And so it, 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 we, we think it just it, it helps to increase the sense of pride. It really does represent that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing to move a district forward in the right direction. And as you all know, losing this in 2020, I believe, was the last time that we were officially fully accredited. That's a long time. That's a long time for a school district to go this long without full accreditation. So, you know, we're, we're extremely proud of, of where we are. Um, but we know that we have a ton of work moving forward. I know you had a second question. What does it mean for the city? Oh, it means, well, to, I think for the city, it's a sense of pride to be able to say that your urban school district is fully accredited. It's something that most people, from what I've heard, they just, it's a sense of pride again. This is our city school district, and you guys are making the type of progress that we've been making. We're seeing more kids graduate. I hope that for this city, us becoming fully accredited helps to attract more families to want to come back and move into the city and take advantage of the amenities that are available here, but also enroll into our school district. So we increase enrollment. We have a healthier school district. That means we have a school district that will be viable and will be around and will be sustained with all of this economic development that's also taking place in this city. Other questions, ladies and gentlemen? When I interviewed January 13th, I believe, of 2016, 
my closing remarks on that stage was, I'm not the most political person. I may not be the most polished person to grace this stage. I don't have superintendent experience. What I do have is a story. My story is very similar to the plight and struggle that many of these kids have. Growing up through the system as a ward of the state, don't know my real father. Mother died, died of a drug overdose. I was homeless. The struggle was real. I wasn't perfect. I took a non-traditional route to graduate high school. And I see, and I told them on the stage, I am a KCPS kid. I just happened to be one that graduated from another school district very similar. And I said that those first three things that I don't have, if that's what you're looking for in a candidate, I'm not your candidate. But what I will do is I have a life story that I can share with you. I have a body of work of working in struggling schools everywhere that I've been and turning them around, whether it's as a teacher or as a principal or as a supervisor. And I will not compromise my values and beliefs for an, for an adult-centered agenda. I'm here to fight for kids. And when I enrolled my kids, I took that same attitude that what I want for them is what I want for everybody else's kids. It just took time. And we have a lot, a long way to go. But I chose this because of a conversation also that I had with my wife. They, you have to go somewhere where you feel that you can have an impact and you can make a difference. And when we had that conversation in the living room, I said, okay, I'm going to interview and I came down and interviewed and got a good feel for the board and came back and interviewed, got a feel and said, hey, I really think that I can come here and make a difference working with the people who are here, just off of who I am, my personality, getting in the community, rolling up my sleeves, being very visible, and being honest with everybody. And that's what we have been able to do, and um, that's why I'm here. Dr. Bedell, thank you. Thank you for being KCPS. With that, Dr. Bedell, one more time, take off your mask and tell us what we're celebrating today. <laughs> one last time, congratulations to everybody in here. You have played a role in this school district receiving its full accreditation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's celebrate, but let's get back to work. Thank you, everybody.